those and trying to make those combos happen. Yeah, the, the two Pikachu Zekrom and the two Zapdos. And interestingly, in this Asachi, which is quite different from the rest, double count two Zera Aura GX mm -hmm. as well. It's, uh, he's really subbed out a lot of those switching cards. He's not playing as many escape boards, as many switches, as many escape ropes. Yeah. He's just using Zero Aura and energy switches to move his Pokemon around. Yeah, so he's got, he's got the full count of... Uh, oh, no, not even quite that. He's got free energy switch. Still, obviously, a, a high count there. And, yeah, sort of valuing Zero Aura GX a lot with that. Of course, the, the ability lets you retreat for free as long as uh, the Pokemon that they have tried to retreat has lightning energy attached. It's going to be an interesting matchup, really. Uh, it depends how aggressive Tord can play the matchup, to be honest. Um, he has a lot of different options. You have Zapdos that can always target down Grubbins early, but then when it becomes a GX versus GX sort of slog, he's also got that Pikachu and Zekrom, and that's what he's kicking off the game with here. He's going to be starting this first game of a best of three. And uh, he's got himself Pikachu and Zekrom active and a Nest Ball to kick things off. It sure does. So as ever, he's going to take that you know important first look through first look through the deck. I wonder, are we going to see Turbo Sword potentially just you know, <laughs> going through and uh, you know grabbing out something really quick, really quickly? He has uh, he has been known to you know do it in the past. <laughs> well, in a game one, he's always very conscious of looking through every single card of his deck. One thing we know about Tord is he wants to have all the information available to him. So he's very. Uh, stringent at looking through as much as he can and get a great idea of what key cards are in the prizes. There's obviously some big Prism Star cards that you have to keep an eye out for. And uh, yeah, he's going to have a quick look through all the options available to him here. Yeah, Energy Switch already in hand. He does see that he does have access to pretty much most of the vital pieces that he could ask for. That um, The one the one thing that will perhaps be a little bit frustrating for him that uh, the stadium card, of course, the Thunder Mountain is in the prize card. So that's usually the you know the one prism that enables you to perhaps get really earlier full blitz than you perhaps would be able to otherwise. But no access to it for Tord for now. We are just going to see a Wonder Tag from Tord. He's playing not just Jirachi, he's playing the Marshadow, the Tapu Lele, as well as just one copy of Jirachi. So it's kind of like a hybrid between the sort of heavy Jirachi builds and then also the turbo style build. So he's yeah. gone somewhere down the middle for the options. Yeah, and the uh, options is what uh, Tord values. Like, sort of like he said in his video, he is more of a reactive player. He prefers to just have the different means to answer to every situation available to him because he trusts his ability to know which answer to use at the right time to meet those situations. Once again, Tord diligently looking through all the cards in his deck to see what options he has available. Finally, going to select that Lily and shuffle up his deck here for a pretty solid turn one. It looks like he's got a couple of energies already in his hand, so he can kick things off pretty sharply here. Yeah, he sure can. So, you know, really good start for Tord here. Going to be able to do the Lily for that for you on that first turn, drawing up to eight cards in his hand, although there isn't like, much else he can play out from his hand without, you know, perhaps wasting attachments here. He can play down the Zap, though, seeing he's obviously going to attach one of the Lightnings here, but he doesn't really want to use that. He can't even use that Guzman right now. There's nothing on Jose's bench. He's going to try and thin an extra card here before this Lily attach into the bench, simply to energy switch it back into the active. So Lily's going to grant him six cards here. Not a bad start, all things considered. Already got Zap, though, so already got Guzman in hand for next turn. If there's only going to be a single Grubbin on Jose's side, and uh, he's already starting to progress with this Pikachu and Zekrom as well. Absolutely, and uh, he does mean, I mean, burning one energy switch means that he is less likely to be able to do a full blitz on a second turn of the game, because of course that is one of his three energy switches already gone, but you know, he's managed to draw an extra card because of it, and it looks like he's drawn a fairly decent hand here. He's got himself the Ultra Ball, he's got a couple more lightning energy, and he can obviously just get those in a discard pile ready to use with Tapu Koko, Prism Stars, Dance of the Ancients. Exactly, it is the dream Ultra Ball. Getting rid of two lightning energy, when you know you have that Tapu Koko available, it just grants you so much acceleration all in one go. And he's also got Viridian Forest for follow-ups next turn as well, so this Ultra Ball is absolutely perfect. Yeah, even better. It's funny, Viridian Forest, it's one of the stadiums that I think some people didn't quite it's one of those stadiums when you look pick it up and first read it you don't think it's it's as impactful as it actually is you think to yourself oh you know basic energy that's something i play so much of in my deck anyway but the fact that you have you know the ability on a stadium to not only you know just get a basic energy from your deck every turn when you need it but the fact that you discard a card to do it as well means you have such great synergy with so many different archetypes Tord, with that Zero Aura already in play, he could just be simply retreating his Pikachu and Zekrom this turn and then doing a Dance on the Ancients next turn, knowing that he's already holding on to the likes of Escape Rope and Guzma as well. So he has so many options here. Yeah, he really does. And Tapu Koko goes to the hand. The Viridian Forest is there ready to use if he wants to do so, as we mentioned, but he might not play it down just yet. 
He actually opts to retreat to the Zero Aura, it looks like, of course, with that thunderclap zone. Again, the Pikachu Zekrom normally with a quite hefty retreat cost can retreat for nothing, but he's maybe going to the Zapdos, maybe not. Yes, he does. Does indeed choose the Zapdos at the end of this, so he can power up the Zero Aura and Pikachu and Zekrom both. Um, one energy to each, and he's really threatening a lot of pressure already on Jose, <laughs> so he better have a good hand of his own. Yeah, this is a really great stuff for Tord. It means that he isn't worried as much about missing that, you know, second turn full blitz. He's got two energy onto the Pikachu Zekrom GX already, and all he needs is one more and a way to retreat the Zapdos, and he's got it, so he's got to be pretty happy about that. And Jose's hand looks awful. No draw supporters, no way to find additional grub in. Not even a grass energy to do Tempest. <laughs> <laughs> this is absolutely awful. He can simply attach a lightning energy to his active. I mean, what else can you really do here? He's got a Tapu Koko GX that's just sort of chilling in his hand, sort of laying a trap, really, is all Jose can do here. He's just going to have to attach to the Grubbin and send it over. I'm really a little awful. bit concerned that we might be giving Jose bad luck with putting him on the stream. It does seem like whenever he goes on stream right now, it's just, yeah, just really horrendous sort of things happen. And look at this, escape rope already in Tord's hand. He's going to bring up that Grubbin with the energy and the Pikachu and Zekron. We know there's already a Viridian yeah. Forest in Tord's hand. Yeah. Oh, getting put into play as well. Yeah, this is a little bit um, tricky though because uh, Viridian Forest going now means that it guarantees uh, Jose at least access to a Grass Energy to do Tempest GX next turn. Is Tempest quick enough, though? Torque might have already run away with the game if there's a Tempest GX at that point. Yeah, that's very true. And, of, of, of course, uh, KOing as Grubbin means that there will be no uh, Vikavolt GX... Uh, not like Vikavolt GX. There will be no Vikavolt coming out next turn. So maybe uh, Torque just thinks it doesn't even matter. You know, I'm so far ahead that you can have the grass energy. This is pretty far ahead. He's yeah. got himself a Cynthia to reload his hand here. Viridian Forest guaranteeing that energy already for him simply to start the full blitz chain. Uh, the only good news for Jose's hand is that it does currently have a Dance of the Ancients Coco yeah. and the Coco GX in there. Those yeah. are two integral pieces if Tord does go all in with this Pikachu and Zekrom. And it's a good thing you did put down the Viridian Forest because he actually did not draw a Lightning Energy mm -hmm. off of uh, the off of the Cynthia there. So yeah, absolutely. Doing, doing the safer play and uh, it paying off. It was a little bit surprising that he didn't use it before the Cynthia, to be honest, because he had something like an Absol in his hand, which I can't see being all that useful at the time. Uh, but instead, he's going to reload that and use the Cynthia first then using the Viridian Forest afterwards, holding on to that option. Yeah. And here we go, full blitz, and he's taking no time here to look through his deck. Is he going to power up the Zero Aura in the back, or is he going to go all in on the active? What do you think here, Nick? Oof. I mean, it, it is tricky because it, you know attaching a bunch of Zero Aura doesn't necessarily get you as much oh value. So, yeah, why not, right? It's well, he's seen Jose drawing so poorly. Just say, by the way, I'm holding on to game here, Jose. I mean, it's because he's not worried about any threat from a type of Coco GX at this point, let's be honest. I mean, Jose has nothing. It's, there's no way that he's able to get that much stuff out. And there's the grass energy, but that actually, that won't matter because he can put the type of Coco down to survive and, yeah, do Tempest GX, but at that point, he's just so far behind. I mean, he doesn't even survive the turn, really, because it's just going to be the Tag Bolt can still knock out the two Pokemon. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You would have to put down the Tapu Koko GX and the Tapu Koko Prism Star just to not lose immediately. But uh, wow, this is an awful spot to be in if you're Jose. Just yeah. a terrible and, starting hand. And not only that, but if you put down both of those, then Tag Bolt GX takes a double knockout still anyway, and then you <laughs> Tord only has one prize left to take. I mean, Tord has just had an incredible first turn, made the full impact on that second turn, and just said... Jose, your hand is poor. I know it. You know it. Yep. I'm going to try and end this game in two turns. And it looks like Tord is actually pretty much on course to do that. I'm, and you can tell, yeah, Jose is there, and he knows that you know it's uh, troublesome for him. He's got the grass energy ready to go. He's going to attach it to the, the Rayquaza eventually, I'd imagine. Yeah, there it goes. And... <laughs> what does he even do? He, I mean, in this spot, I feel like Jose is just... Stalling out the inevitable here. Yeah. Can't see him coming back from this game, especially when you have to physically bench stuff. Yeah, he's just going to yeah. concede this game. It's a pretty wise decision. I mean, looking at that board of towards there, a six energy Pikachu and Zekrom ready to go, completely healthy. Jose, not even with any grubbins in play. I mean, that's as quick as it gets. Yeah, maybe he was thinking maybe there's an extremely outside chance, but then he realized, no, you know, Tord's going to take four prizes next turn, and there's no way I'm going to be able to take six prizes to recover from that, especially given how, I mean, even. 
if we well, would have survived if you'd done that, but he didn't even have a grubbing down, so no. how is he ever recovering from that? Yeah, exactly. It's just an unwinnable situation for Jose. He's going to scoop him up and move on to the second game with plenty of time to make a comeback. Also has the benefit of going first in this occasion as well, so things couldn't have been worse in that first game, so he's got to look on the positive side of things and try and get his strategy rolling. Yeah, and I mean, if you're going to lose a game, you're going to want, you want to lose it quickly at least. You want to sure. give yourself the maximum amount of time to actually see out a full game two and three, and Jose is actually giving himself a chance to do that by just conceding. And this is an awkward matchup by uh, by any means anyway, because of the aggression that Tord is able to put out with that Pikachu and Zekrom you saw. He started it, so he was always going to be going down that route. But it feels like Pikachu and Zekrom will always try and pressurize these Rayquaza players and take out as many energy as possible, because that's their source of damage. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it comes to the point where if uh, Jose is able to build up all his energy and actually get to the point where Rayquaza GX are doing one-hit knockouts on tag teams, then obviously he's going to have a very good time and going to win. But if he can't, as in the, was the case there, well, then Tord is just going to run all over him. Yeah, and that's also including the fact that Jose has to dodge some let looses as well. He yes. has to do well for that because it's not only a turn one that he needs, he also needs to find himself that rare candy and Vikavot on turn two. We saw yesterday he had the catastrophic prize cards of the three rare candy and the three Vikavot. He's yeah. going to be praying that doesn't happen again. Yeah, that's the thing. First, his battle yesterday was to do the prizes. Now it seems just more specifically what he's actually drawing. <laughs> and he's going to give uh, Todd a little cut there and uh, Todd's going to shuffle up the deck. I mean, he's got to be feeling good right now. He's got plenty of time even if he loses the game two that he has time enough for a game three anyway. Yeah, exactly. It does come down to it. So here we go. Um, what does Todd open with? It looks like just the Zero or GX, so we're going to have to start with that. Oh no, he does have an Eevee he could leave with as well, actually. I mean, Eevee's an interesting one for sure. You can see he's mulling it over already. Got to take your time in these high pressure situations. Yeah, and you actually go for Eevee in the yeah. end. That's Okay, so the, the judge, uh, just uh, good old uh, Reese Williams, also the UK UK player, the current uh, judge, just making sure that the players here yeah, put their prizes out so we can see them. And now sliding, sliding across, and it looks like yeah, two Guzmas. But I mean, considering compared to the prizes yesterday, I'm sure <laughs> Jose will take that to be honest. Yeah, not ideal, but yeah, as you said, he's had worse personally. Yeah, and uh, we'll get a good look at towards in a moment, I'm sure. One Pikachu and Zekrom, couple energies, couple lilies again. On balance, this isn't the worst of outcomes. No, and uh, I do believe that Tord is playing uh, for Lily, actually, so Prize 2 isn't even that big a deal. Jose has the benefit of going first here. He's going to kick things off with a Nest Ball, it seems. Um, he started off with a Rayquaza GX, it looks like, in the active. Oh, it's a Zero Aura GX, actually. And, Again, could uh, be worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not too bad for him. And he's already eyeing up those Grubbins. He's going to have a look through his prize card and see... Are there any Vika bots there this time? <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's something that's uh, quite uh, cool about uh, Zero Aura and Rayquaza is that they both have 180 HP. One of the things that you fear, obviously, if you're, when you're playing against the Pikachu Zekrom GX, is as I already mentioned, a de devastating Tag Bolt GX uh, attack. Which, if you have free extra energy compared to the attack cost to use it, not only do you get to do 200 to the active, but you get to do 170 to a bench Pokemon. Zero Aura and Rayquaza GX just survive that, which is, which is a lot better than obviously getting a double knocked out for four prizes, although having said that, <laughs> Tapu Lele GX has gone down onto the field and that's exactly what he would have not wanted to do if he could avoid it. I was about to say, the unfortunate thing is he's been forced into a Tapu Lele by the looks of things. Well, it looks like he's eyeing up a Volkner here. Maybe he's just trying to guarantee a second Grubbin. Yeah, maybe that's so. the main thing I'm considering right now. I mean, it makes sense, right? Grubbin, obviously, you need to get your, your Vikavots out as quickly as possible and getting Grubbins out is the way to do so. Although it looks like he just opted for the Mysterious Treasure. Mysterious Treasure, also reasonable. It can get him towards Rayquaza, which is obviously his main attacker. It is a little bit worrying for him, but the good news for Jose is, is there's no Jirachi in the active and Tord only plays one copy, so it's not as easy to get that early Guzma Zapdos yeah. combination without the help of Stella Wish. Yeah, very much so. Although, think, thinking about it, we're talking about uh, how you know Rayquaza and Zerora have uh, you know more than 170 HP, and actually Zerora, I should correct myself, has 190, not 180. But if uh, Tord just attaches the lightning to the active EV, uses that energy evolution ability to evolve to Jolteon, he can do the, do the attack and do 30 to the Zerora, enter the Rayquaza, and all of a sudden, yeah. all of those are vulnerable to attack yeah. GX bench snipe. Let's see the first of a few stormy wins here. Unfortunate that one of his Prism Star cards, Shaman Prism, gets thrown into the loss zone from that stormy yeah. wins. But we know there are energies in there, so he can start powering up his uh, main attacker here. He still has a manual attachment for turn as well, of yeah. course. 
Yeah, that is really not ideal. Of course, uh, Shaman Prism Star being a very, very important attacker, to be honest. Of course, it has a, essentially the same attack, uh, or a very similar attack to Rayquaza GX, but it's on a basic Pokemon that only gives up one prize instead of two, and it has free retreats as well. Yeah, it's an absolutely absurd card, really. Yeah. And it's only really being able to capitalize on that in the re on these uh, Rayquaza builds. As we do pass it over to Tord now, he's found himself Nest Ball. Looks like he's already got a couple energies in his hand as well, but looks like he's not got the best of starts either. I didn't see any supporters there. No, it doesn't look like it. And it might be that, you know, attaching energy and doing doing Jolty on GX might be one of the best things he can actually go for. Although he is going for Jirachi here, it looks like. It's yeah. one of that he plays. Got a Nest Ball out his Jirachi and hope that Stella Wish, he can retreat into it and hope that that gets him out of this funk. Makes sense. Yeah, I mean, he's saying no to a potential Electro Bullet. There's also a... Uh, escape rope already in his hand, so he still has the option to attack with Jolteon, but it means he can get a free Stellar Wish in and hope to find himself a draw supporter. Yeah, which of course he would ideally like to do. So, yeah, one last look through, again, Tord as ever being meticulous to make sure that he knows what he has access to over the course of this game. And with that, yeah, he will, is actually, looks like he's, uh, oh, he's probably gonna go back into the deck. It looks yeah, like. it's energy evolution time, I think. Yeah, there it is. So. As you said, uh, Lightning goes on. That's Energy Evolution Ability states that if you attach a basic energy to Eevee, you can evolve that Eevee from the deck into an evolution of Eevee of the type matching the energy. So out comes the Jolteon GX. And it's just a fantastic ability that essentially makes Jolteon sort of like a fake basic Pokemon, really. As long as the conditions are met, you can get straight into this and attack with a Stage 1 on that very first turn, which is absolutely excellent for you. Tor's going to have one more look through his deck uh, before probably retreating into this Jirachi and trying to get a Stellar Wish here because currently he's supporterless. Also, any like Ball Search card could at yeah. least get him into Let Loose because that's another thing that's playing on his mind, trying to deny Jose from Rare Candy Vikavolt combinations. Yeah, and uh, one important thing to note is that Chotun GX actually has free retreat, which it seems quite absurd. <laughs> it's uh, not many uh, GX Pokemon that have that uh, free retreat, or not many Pokemon generally, but Jolteon is one of them, and that's a great asset to have. It's kind of talked about in the same breath as a Zoroark GX. Although it doesn't draw cards, it can grant you so much value. It's got free retreat, you can get it out on the first turn, spreading options as well as that swift run, which is always such a headache to get around. A big miss from Tord, though. He can only find himself the Viridian Forest off of this Stellar Wish. Oh dear, oh dear. Yeah, not ideal in the slightest. He is going to still take it, obviously. He's, that's a card that's very important for him to get extra value out of here. his energy in hand by discarding them for Tapu Koko's Dance of the Ancients and just making sure he has energy in hand to attach them attack with, but yeah, still not really ideal, especially because uh, I believe uh, from what we, what we said, yeah, he has an escape rope in his hand, not a switch, so that means that uh, Jose can bring up something that he doesn't care as much about having 30 hit to in the active. Here we do see Tord using that escape rope, getting his Jolteon back into the active to start putting pressure on some of Jose's Pokemon, the 30 damage not being all that relevant on the Tapu Lele GX right now, um, but he may be putting damage setting it up for potentially a knockout with Headbutt or Swift Run onto the Rayquaza, and that's exactly what we're going to see here. Yeah, Rayqu Ray Rayquaza definitely makes the most sense out of uh, everything to hit with that Electro Bullet. It does mean that, yeah, it will be in range of a Tag Bolt GX, or even, like you said, just a follow-up KO for just by attaching an extra energy and maybe a couple of Electro Powers and a uh, Headbutt or a Swift Run just gets him there. We're going to see Jose now. He's going to attach to his active, and it's time for Cynthia. Can he get into the fabled Stage 2 combo that's been... Oh, so faithful since basically the start of the game. Yeah. It's been around for a long time. Rare Candy Stage 2. Yeah, it, now, it's uh, all all it takes is for him to find those two. He has not prized any of the counts of either of them. He has access to all of his like vaults and all his Rare Candies, so the odds are with him, and he just needs to find it now. Even with the Vika Vault, if it does come down, it still feels like he's a little far away from a knockout. 200 hit points is a big hurdle for him. He'd need some help from some additional Rayquazas, but he has drawn into those at the very least. Uh, he has, but I think he's missed the Rare Candy. Yeah, no Rare Candy. Wow. Just a couple of Rayquazas. No Rare Candy for him, so time to do some Stormy Wins. And that is not ideal. <laughs> not at all. No, not two, at all. Two Vulcaners and a... Two Vulcaners and a Vika Vault, yeah. Yeah, this is looking pretty ugly once again, missing that crucial turn two. As we said, Tord wasn't able to use a let loose, but even then the Cynthia was not kind to Jose. He's going to do some quick checking of numbers here, and he's saying, well, I'm out of reach anyway. Time to Tempest by the looks of things. And you know, if you can blame him, I mean, if that's all he can do, right? It's just, uh, yeah, he's going to flip that GX marker. Tempest GX discards that whole hand of stuff and uh, does draw himself 10 cards. Oof, it's a big hand, of course, and uh, this can get him into some better stuff. That's a couple of Vika Vault now in the discard pile as well. 
as well as a Delmise as well. You know, that's normally like the non, the single prize attacking option that uh, the Rayquaza Vikervolt deck has, but uh, it, it has now gone for him. And it's 10 cars with, where there's still no Vikavolt GX option, no Ultra Ball plus Rare Candy combo, two Vikavolts in the discard pile, no Rescue Stretchers in there. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's incredible. Missing off 10 cards as well. Yeah, but I mean, considering he has just discarded two Vikavolts, I mean, it's, yeah. it's sort of less surprising there. It's, uh, it is unfortunate that he hasn't even hit any of his recovery cards either, though. There goes the Viridian Forest. Yep, as we mentioned earlier, discarding a Lightning just to get it in there for Coco later, and we'll, of course, get another Lightning from the deck, so he'll now be able to attach that to either the, the uh, Zero Aura or the Jolteon, whichever he feels is most relevant. I imagine probably going to go for a Headbutt if he can find himself the damage boosters, or if he's able to find a Zapdos or a Pikachu Zekrom to attack with, that would obviously be even more ideal. Yeah, I think there was one Electro Power in his hand from last turn. It depends what he's drawn into this turn. Obviously, the Fridian Forest was off of a Stellar Wish, so it depends how far his hand can take him. Looks like oh, yeah, looks like he just drew another energy card. To be honest, uh, oh really not firing on all cylinders. Once again, he's going to go into the Stellar Wish and try and get himself out of this spot. Yeah, maybe thinking to himself that actually doing 110, even 140 to a Rayquaza doesn't really achieve anything. It, it doesn't even leave a Rayquaza in range of a you know Electro Bullet later on. So may as well just retreat into the Jirachi, try and find myself an out to this uh, kind of. You know, he had his hand that Rizzy isn't working for me. And now Todd has a decision. Do I take the Tempo Guzma and go for a Headbolt plus Electro Power on the Tapu Lele, knocking that out and taking two prizes? Or do I go for the reset of Cynthia and try and get back into a switching card? For me, the Guzma looks pretty safe. This is the time when you think about him checking his deck and seeing those prize cards and thinking, what are my outs now? Yeah. How how many cards that can I get for my prize cards that will get me into a fresh hand all over again? Yeah, and this is why it is important to check your prizes, not just so that you know what you don't have access to, but so that you can make, in the times when it comes to a decision like this, you can think to yourself, actually, you know, I have an option to take a draw supporter here, but can I take an aggressive supporter that will not only will take, get me a knockout, but then odds are from taking stuff from the prizes will also get me a draw support for the next turn and get essentially a double benefit. And this is going to be a big tempo prize or a couple of prizes for Tord here. It's going to be interesting to see. I imagine he's going to be going for the head bolt, but there's still the option of a Swift Run GX as well here. Yeah, it, it, it Doing Swift Run GX does mean that he leaves himself not open to do you know, Tag Bolt GX later, and mm. that's obviously the GX attack you want to do more often than not, especially against a completely GX-focused deck like Jose's, because that's normally when you get the most value out of it. You can see the uh, the hesitation, though, because with a 10-card hand from Jose, you're expecting some fireworks next turn. Yeah, and uh, obviously we know that those fireworks aren't necessarily as big as uh, Tord might think they could be, but he can't see his hand. We can, so it's not really, <laughs> not really fair in that sense. Tord once again taking his time. There's also the Grubbin that's looking appealing. He's thinking, maybe I could take out Jose's main Ooh. means of accelerating. Yeah, so again, uh, Tord, you know, playing it safe here, not taking as many prizes, but realizing that in terms of you know, preventing Jose from making a response, taking out the Grubbin is actually the best way to prevent that, leaving no Vikavolt option at all. At that point, you're only really afraid of the likes of Tapu Koko Prism Star on Jose's side to ramp up into a huge amount of damage. And, and he you does can see, go for the Swift Run. He goes for Swift Run. He's respecting the 10 card hand and saying, This Jolton's all I've got right now. I, uh, I need this to stick around. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's, it's uh, completely. Completely fair way to go about things, because uh, like I said, even with the Viker Vault down, you know, maybe some Tapu Koko shenanigans could get in there. So Swift Run going to protect him for this turn. We're going to force Jose to find not only you know, all these uh, energy attaching things, but, uh, but, but a Guzma as well. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, in this hand, I'm not sure if it gets him there. Um, we see the Mysterious Treasure. He's already played one Tapu Lele, and he plays one Marshall, which is our other option. So this Swift Run, well-timed from Tord, and uh, it's going to mean that this Jolteon sticks around. Sure does, and uh, yeah, Jose's looking through right now just to determine what the best option actually is. I can't believe that the main option might genuinely be having to let loose your massive hand back into a small number of cards here. Uh, I mean, if it's all you can do, it's all you can do, right? It might be, does he even have access to another Rayquaza right now? Is there one in his deck? Yeah, he does have access to them. It's just uh, he's actually going to take no target here. Maybe lowering his hand size for a Lily as well that's in his hand. That's also very reasonable. Because uh, I, I wonder if... Uh, I, maybe I was imagining things, but he, of course he only plays three Rayquaza GX, mm -hmm. and I think one might be in the discard pile. I could have been remembering wrong, but... Oh, that could be the case. There's been a lot of stormy windsing at this point as well. Yeah, that's hard, I can't really see from that look through, but uh, but either way, he's, t he's opted to take nothing, so it doesn't make too much of a difference right now, and... Jose can continue to remove some more lightning energy. He can use a uh, Tord Stadium 
for his own benefit here. Yep, just yeah, another so lightning energy in the discard. Yeah, not even taking an energy off of the Viridian Forest, but just using it for that discard effect so that he can get the maximum value out of a Dance of the Ancients. And it looks like that's what he's going to do now. Uh, he does attach the grass first. And then actually goes to the Lysander Labs, interestingly enough. Yeah, he's just lowering his hand size for this Lily here. There's no two ways about it. No Guzma, so Tord has bought himself that turn with Swift Run. Yep, two. Two cards, Marshall GX and Tapu Coco GX. So you're right, there might be a Rayquaza that's either prized or not accessible to Jose right now. Yeah, there goes the Dance of the Ancients. Tapu Coco Prism Star goes to the Lost Zone. Two energies get attached, one on each of those Rayquazas. And yeah, I mean, if the Tord hadn't gone, hadn't gone for the Swift Run there, that Jolting would have been KO'd been by now. So proving to be a very, very wise move. And Jose's got the awkward decision of, where do I retreat into now? He's going to eventually choose Zera Aura is his option. Free retreating via Thunderclap Zone. Just saying, here, Tord, take this one instead. Yeah, and it looks like, oh, Tord finds himself an Acrobike, so he can use that to maybe dig a little bit further into his deck. He did also take the one of his two uh, Pikachu Zekroms out of the prizes. Of course, the one the other one's in his deck, but the second one was in the prizes, but it was the first one he took. Ooh, it's not quite salvation just yet. No. <laughs> He's able to acro bike into an Electro Power and a Wobbuffet. This is still yet to be a draw supporter from Tord. Yeah, it's a pretty easy discard on the Wobbuffet, to be fair. The, Taka, the Tapu Koko Prism Star's already been used, so... He's not too worried about anything else that uh, Jose can put out uh, in terms of uh, Prism Star Pokemon abilities. But now the decision is, you know, what, how, how does he approach this? He's got, as we already mentioned, the um, Pikachu and Zekrom GX in his hand, but putting it down doesn't really achieve much right now. So it looks like he might just have to be content with, yeah, going for the Stellar Wish again. Yeah, his hand doesn't get him very far, so Stellar Wish probably seems like the safest route. And here we go. There's a Cynthia that he's eyeing up. Electro Power is also tempting for him. I can see the reason to hold on to it, but then you're still playing sort of chicken around trying to see if he's got Guzma or not on uh, Jose's end. Yeah, I mean, essentially you're hoping that, you know, yeah, Jose doesn't have Guzma and then that you, next turn you can somehow retreat the Jirachi and play free Electro Powers and take a knockout on something, but I think you just have to go for the Cynthia here. I feel like it's probably the safest route. Yeah. He is thinking about it pretty seriously, though. He's yeah, I mean, Electro Powers are very powerful resources for you. There's one Guzma in the discard pile, and towards basically, you know, he knew that Jose didn't have it in the 10 card hand, so would you really play around it if there's just an extra two draws from Lily? I mean, maybe he's uh, continuing to hedge here that three additional cards from Jose is not going to be a means of Guzma. Yeah, and uh, I think that's a fair hedge to make, uh, to be honest. Um, Cynthia goes to her hand in any case, and yeah, the, the hand is currently Lightning, Pikachu Zekrom, Energy Switch, Double Electro Power, Cynthia. And at this point in the game, is Zero Aura just as good as a Pikachu and Zekrom? The GX attack has been used, and instead, Tord's going to still go for the Pikachu and Zekrom. Gives up an additional prize card, of course, when knocked out. Uh, but yeah, you can see Tord's actually going to be spreading his energies all over the place. He's having the options for everything here. Yeah, opting not to use those Electro Powers just yet. Not, you know, not confident enough that he'll be able to find a way to retreat this uh, Jirachi, or rather, to switch this Jirachi, having already used his retreat for the turn, and as already mentioned, this list is playing a lower counter switching card, I believe. He's only playing one escape rope, is that yeah. he's only switching out. There's no no switch and uh, nothing else like that. Essentially, he goes into Jirachi to Guzma. Yeah. <laughs> That's usually the the deal here. Yeah, but no Guzma for him this time, so back back in action now for Tord with the Cynthia play, and his hand is looking better. He's got Acrobikes, he has energy, he has stuff for next turn, but going to have to yeah, be content with not doing much this turn other than just sitting on that hand. And that's exactly it. It's sitting on this hand. This Jirachi is going to be trapped thanks to its sleeping. There's already the escape rope in the discard pile. And Tord's got the decision. He's looking at Let Loose, and sometimes it looks like a no-brainer when your opponent has six cards. But when your opponent didn't Guzma last turn and only drew two additional ones, I think passing is the wisest move here. Yeah, agreed. And... Uh, Jose did not draw it for turn either, just a grass energy off the top of the deck. Pretty sure he's got two prized, actually. Yes, yes, he does, yeah. of course, we mentioned earlier. So it's funny how at the beginning we said, oh, you know, it won't be, be that big a deal prize-wise, <laughs> but actually right now it's a huge deal because... I mean, Todd's got away with a swift run, he's yeah. got away with passing in the active with a non-GX. I mean, these Guzmas have been brutal. Yeah, and uh, Jose's only playing three as well, yep. he's not playing four, so actually he only had one Guzma left in his whole deck. Simple enough turn for Jose, attached to the bench, uh, sorry, attached to the Zero Aura, retreated to the bench. And let's go. Smack yep. through the active. Yep, so Jirachi goes down. 
Up comes the Jolteon, of course, with uh, that free retreat. But now Tord is uh, free to you know, poten potentially take a humongous turn. He might even be able to take a knockout on the Rayquaza as long as he hits an energy switch. Still no sign of any grubbing from Jose at all. He really does need this because as these Rayquazas start to get knocked out, his damage is just going to deplete even more. So yeah. things are looking very scary for Jose. Yeah, they really are. There goes the Nest Ball. Actually, you know, may not even need an energy switch if he has access to the Tapu Koko. It is. Star. Yeah, he can just uh, obviously attach that way. Although... Well, he only has one lightning in his discard pile right now. He would have liked to get a second one in there. I wonder if he has a discard out in his hand. I mean, he's always going to be taking this Tapu Koko Prism. Even getting half the value is still incredible, especially yeah. if you're using a full blitz, for example. That option's available to him as well. Yeah, that's very true. And all it takes is one Electro Power or a Choice Band, and that full blitz will be a KO onto the Rayquaza as well. And then another free energy on the board. <laughs> when you're only getting one energy that helps you get three, I think it's a good deal. Yeah. It, it, if full blitz is one of those attacks that do seem, you know, a little bit absurd because you know you think to yourself, uh, free energy cost attack. Who, granted, it's all your know, colored energy. It's free lightning. Okay, that's quite high, but you do get to do 150 damage. That's pretty decent. Oh, it's also on a Pokemon that has 240 HP. Oh, you also get to attach free energy from your deck to something. That's a lot of oh. Yeah. <laughs> that's a real snowball effect if ever I've seen one. Yeah, yeah, I could not agree more. And, oh, he has the lightning energy off the acrobike too. Yeah, that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. Even more energy going to be hitting this board. Uh, the only real fear here is that Tord's going to be putting up a three prize Pokemon into the active. Jose's holding on to Tapu Koko GX and Marshadow GX. He could actually be able to string a couple knockouts himself here and win before Tord. He's currently only taken one prize card. Oh, wow. Tord only going to be able to take, you know, he's going to take three attacks to win this game. Yeah. If Jose's able to power up the Tapu Koko GX next turn, then get this Marshadow working. Maybe he could get over the line before Tord here. Yeah, could it have been a consideration maybe just for Tord to just attack with Zero Aura instead? I mean, he's getting a lot of energy in play. I wouldn't hate it at all. No, exactly, because well, he's already committed to attaching manually to the Pikachu Zekrom now, so I don't think he can do it anymore. Yeah. He's pretty much I think that tells you what his intention is. Yeah. Well, he could even attack with Zapdos if he wanted to, but again, that doesn't take a knockout, so I don't really think you get much value out of that. Yeah, I think he's definitely going through a Rayquaza this turn, no yeah. matter what. It, it is just a bit scary, though, obviously. I mean, there's five energy on the board, and there is the the threat of the Tapu Koko GX. Mm -hmm. And there's it's in hand for Jose already. Yeah. Lightning goes on to the Zapdos, though, so obviously just getting that ready in case he wants to attack with it later on. But like you said, I would be surprised if we didn't see <laughs> how much, blitz how much dodging of Guzma does Tord think he can get away with here? Can can, can <laughs> did, did just, you know, X-ray vision? Maybe he can you know, yeah. <laughs> see someone managed to you know look at look at our price cam feed. No, uh, it seems like uh, he's just going to go for that full blitz electro power, helping him get that knockout. And I imagine there's going to be energy flowing onto this uh, Zero Aura in the back. Yeah. So the final two that are in his deck, actually. Yeah, I mean, even if there's more than two left in his deck, he wouldn't want to attach more than sure. two because yeah. uh, Zero Aura only needs free energy to do that Plasma Fist attack. Just does 160 damage and then can't attack next turn. It's a solid number. You know, it's a pretty decent attack no matter which way you look at it. Very similar to a card which I know you're very fond of and familiar with, Lapras GX. Oh, I'm a big fan. I'm <laughs> a big fan. So what are we after for Jose? Jose needs to find himself Grubbin, bench a Marshadow GX and attach to it. Tapu Koko GX3, there's Pikachu and Zekrom this turn. And uh, yeah, those three things. Yeah, those, yeah Make sure he gets a Vika Vault the following turn. Yeah, that, that is his uh, win condition into this game. He needs to you know, just deal with this uh, Pikachu and Zekrom now and have that Marshadow waiting in the wings to take the follow-up knockout on the Zero Aura. That's his win condition. Yeah, definitely going to be the case. Can Jose string it all together? Looks like he picked up a Rescue Stretcher for his turn. That can help him get back a Grubbin. I think it's vital for him. I think it's much easier for him to reach towards a knockout with the uh, with the Marsha GX than um, this Rayquaza, but yeah. instead he's going to Stormy Winds here. As I was gonna say, Jose disagrees. Goes for the Stormy Winds. Well, okay. Going to pitch another Grub in here. I feel like the route was pretty planned out for him, really. Instead, going for this Rayquaza, and I mean, if the Tapu Koko GX goes down, you're not going to have a way to take your final two prizes after this. You won't have enough energy to sort of remain on this board. No, oh, exactly. Um, does that just go for the attachment? Does he have enough to take a duck out of a Rayquaza now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's actually going to play a Guzma here. Oh, okay. So he's actually just he's managed to find you know, one his one Guzma that he still has in deck. And uh, just actually going to go for the Zero Aura straight off, straight off. It's an interesting route he's going for here. He's hoping that he can sort of lay the trap on this Pikachu and Zekrom. There's now still five energies in play and on the oh, side of the field. And Jose just uh, took Guzmas out of his prizes yep, as well. That's true. That's true. All right, that's the route we're going for here. Yeah, talk to have a look through. But but like you said, I mean, he leaves himself so vulnerable here because you know 
it's it's not going to be hard for Todd to take a KO here, and then so much energy gets knocked off. Well, the only issue is now Todd. Well, Zera Aura's off the field, so maybe it's down to Todd to pay retreat out of his Pikachu and Zekrom here to get it out of range of a Tapu Koko GX attack. Yeah, maybe. I think that's, that might, that's probably... Oh, both GX attacks have been used. That's my bad. Oh, that's, oh yeah. So of yeah, course. Yeah, he's, Tempest, yeah. <laughs> he's used Tempest. Let's not discuss that as an out yeah. anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, so, yeah, absolutely. No, uh, Jose's backed himself into a corner here because, yeah, this, uh, Ray, this Rayquaza goes down and then he has no energy acceleration. Yeah, that makes the rescue stretcher for Grubbin even more... Important. Important. Wow, okay. So, so and that changes the complexion of this game for yeah. sure. And not only that, but I mean, Todd has the Electro Power ready to go in his hand, so he's got the KO as well. Yeah, leaving uh, Jose with only four energies remaining. It's a big hurdle, 240 hit points at that point. Yeah, especially without you know, access to that uh, type of Thunder GX, of course, we were, you know, that would normally be the out yeah, to for sure. this huge four blitz, but just a not an option that's available right now. Todd continuing to attach to some Zapdos here. Electro Power obviously in hand, as you say. There's also Let Loose available to him, maybe trying to just finally disrupt Jose's hand towards the latter stages here. Really shut the door on him. Yeah, I think he's uh, debating how he wants to approach this. If he gets two Electro Powers, he could actually get a KO with the Jolteon instead, but mm -hmm. I think he'd rather not do that if possible. And yeah, he does just bring up the... Well, if he's retreating, it tells us he's probably not using the Let Loose either. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, he would have held off until after. Yeah, and uh, actually, he doesn't even need the Electro Power to take the knockout with yeah, the uh, prior damage. Yeah, 30 damage already on. Four Blitz who does the 150. That is already enough to get the KO exactly. And, yep, yeah, Tor just goes for it. Maybe. <laughs> he's taking <laughs> yes. his time, but yes, he's eventually going to take two more prize cards. He's also going to have a quick scout through his deck as well here. Yeah, but as we were talking before, there are no energies left in his deck. All the energies that are either in the field and are in the discard pile or in the prize cards, so... Now back to Jose, but he's he's backed himself into a corner. I mean, you know, how did he get himself out of this? There's no access to. He can do a sky high claws. He can still use the type of Coco GX, but he can't use the GX attack, which is so important to take the knockout on the Pikachu, Pikachu and Zekrom. The only route I'm seeing is Jose using his own let loose to disrupt towards hand and make sure he has no electro powers and hopes that a Rayquaza GX can take a hit. That's the only thing I can see. I can't see any way for him to take a one-hit KO here. Yeah, and Jose just concedes. He knows that he's uh, too far behind, cannot recover. Todd takes game two and takes the match and <laughs> is one game closer to maybe making it to the top eight again. You see, Todd, he was pointing at the Tapu Koko GX. He was saying, I was, I was afraid of this the whole time. <laughs> and Jose was like, no, I, I uh, tempested. Don't worry, Todd. <laughs> yeah, wow. Well, Todd takes a huge win there. Very yeah. impressive, to be honest. As always, Todd taking his time, but also going through everything in his head and getting himself in an unlosable situation, as we've seen so often. Yeah, and I think we have to give credit to Jose there. I think, obviously, getting that down to Grubbin from that rescue stretcher was important, but I think even 